When you look at the actual internal design of a bomb, and, and it's just so damn clever and neat, and, and to think that with that you can lift a million tons of rock into the sky, it sort of gives you a feeling of omnipotence, which, which is very seductive. Arnada del Muerto, The Journey of Death. The men who designed the first atomic bomb raced to complete the job. If they're right, this clunky hand-built device will melt desert sand and turn night into day, rendering every previous weapon of war obsolete in a few millionths of a second. The night before Trinity, project scientists under orders from General Groves took turns guarding the fully armed, electrically triggered prototype in its metal hut atop the shot tower. As a lightning storm, raged around them. Groves, of course, scurried Oppenheimer away and wouldn't let him get near the tower because he was aware it might go off and he didn't want to lose his lab director who'd have to get another bomb together for him. Edward Teller had raised even more frightening concerns. Initial calculations suggested the possibility of triggering an uncontrollable reaction in the atmosphere, one that, in a worst-case scenario, could incinerate the entire world. Hans Bethe was assigned to double-check the math. A decimal point had been misplaced. Odds now favored the world surviving the Trinity test. It must be said to the praise of Edward Teller that he made his group investigate very carefully and make sure that ignition of the atmosphere was totally impossible. The clouds parted shortly before dawn. Scientists, soldiers, and VIPs moved to their observation posts, some of them more than 20 miles from ground zero. Edward Teller passed out suntan lotion to protect against the ultraviolet radiation. At 5.31 a.m., a mechanical timer in the command bunker clicked at the end of its track. Six miles away, the firing circuits closed. Capacitors discharged, and 32 critically positioned detonators fired as one. The shock wave from the shaped charges rocketed inward, compressing the plutonium sphere to half its former size and turning it into a super-dense liquid before finally crushing the beryllium initiator at its core, releasing a flood of neutrons. The chain reaction developed gradually. More than 80 generations of atomic nuclei had to fission before enough energy was released to crack the bomb casing. The entire process took nearly eight millionths of a second. It only seemed instantaneous. The fireball starts out at about a million degrees, which means the only radiation coming off of it is x-rays, and you can't see it. It's not producing visible light. And it's only after it cools down, which it does very rapidly, to about 10,000 degrees, the temperature of the surface of the sun, that it suddenly blazes into light. And then, because it's far enough away not to kill you, you just see the explosion. You don't hear the sound. You don't feel the blast. It's just this thing happening in silence. And then, abruptly, the sound bursts over your face. And the shockwave blows dust and leaves and sand in your face. And, and the physical wave is such that it shakes the ground as it goes by you and resonates in your chest cavity. Well, our first reaction was, we've done it. And it was even more powerful than we had previously calculated. The second thought was, what a horrible gadget have we invented. There was a strong feeling. What next? It'd be much more than a fireball. 